Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to A Cow's Opinion, where I, the cow, will give you my opinion on the state of the video game industry as yet another unfortunate layoff situation has happened, but this time, it's not with a major studio, and this is so sucky, I don't even want to do any of my bits, I don't want to do the music thing, because this is a game I was actually looking forward to, so, Legend of, excuse me, League of Geek, I was watching League of Legends replays during lunch, I apologize, League of Geeks, which is the studio behind Armella, Hello, oh, the the ones who are doing the upcoming Hell political strategy game Solaris Inferno, and I have also been developing uh, get the game I was really excited for, Jump Light Odyssey, where it's kind of like FTL, but you manage this entire battleship. You have a huge crew, and you have to like go around saving people and getting resources and fighting battles. It looks like, it looks like just basically the anime uh, improvement of the FTL formula. Looked fantastic, but. Today, as per Joshua Wolins at PC Gamer, we always give credit, we don't steal. They laid off over half their staff and have quote-unquote indefinitely paused development of this game because all funding and investment has evaporated from the video games industry. This is not great. So, there's been a lot of this. We've covered it a lot, guys. One, Obviously, on a cow's opinion, we've talked a lot about Activision Blizzard being bought by Microsoft. There's been a lot of consolidation and buyouts and closures. The entire Endeavor thing where they were trying to get billions of dollars in funding to run all the studios they bought. And then that fell through because you shouldn't trust Saudi Arabian blood money for your game studio. And then they had to start closing studios, canceling games, and laying off staff because, oh well... This entire major complicated thing where we're going to own hundreds of IP depending on us getting billions of dollars in funding to run the studios that we were buying instead of building up over time, and it's unfortunate. So the uh, they are from Australia, and they have had no choice. They On Twitter, their co-founders Ty Carey, Blake Mazizi, I apologize if I get your last name wrong, Blake, and Trent Custers, I've been saying that it is because of rapidly rising costs, the weakening Australian dollar, poor early access sales, and the unprecedented withdrawal of funding opportunities across the industry. And none of that is wrong. Inflation has been rampant as we get through the, I can't say what it was, but the global medical emergency. Uh, Australia's dollar is weakening. Early access can be really rough to find sales in, and unprecedented withdrawal funding. The with interest rates sky high, the people aren't funding as much anymore and getting as many loans because it's too expensive. And here is their statement, by the way: for almost fifteen years, League of Geeks it threw me off when it was like big, small, big. I'm sorry. League of Geeks has been home to some of the most talented and brilliant folks in the industry. This week, we've had to say goodbye to too many of them. Rapidly rising operation costs, a weakening Australian dollar, poor early access sales, and the unprecedented withdrawal of funding opportunities across the industry placed us in a position where we could no longer afford to cover development costs. As a result, we've had to make the impossible decision to pause development indefinitely on Jump Light Odyssey. More than 50% of our studio has been active, impacted by redundancies, including the entire Jump Light Odyssey team, meaning plans we had to get the game to full release, including plans for PS5 and Xbox, have been put on hold. So they're not saying they don't want to do the game, they're just saying it's not happening anytime soon, if ever, guys. This decision will not impact the launch or quality of Solium Infernum, as we continue to work towards a February 14th release, nor would it affect the existing support we offer on Melo. On Melo is the board game-like thing where you pick a fantasy creature and you have to kill the Lion King. It's kind of cool. And it's players. You can find more information, including an FAQ and a link to the staff who were affected and their roles within this thread. We wholeheartedly recommend each and every single LOG team member we had to have to say goodbye to, so if you're in a position to signal boost or hire, please do so. We are devastated to be put in this position. We have done everything in our power to avoid it. We are so very sorry. So here's the list of their staff affected. We truly believe they're most talented in the bids. 
So they're trying to get them uh, jobs too. They've written up a post that speaks directly with the decision made at studio as well as the FAQ you can find here. Moving forward, we want to ensure the game does something to give back to our team. So for the next 12 months or until the dev is resumed, whichever comes first, half of our profit for every copy sold will be distributed to our team, including those whose employment was impacted. And there's the video. Uh, should I? Oh, no, that's the uh, link. I'm not. It's not a video. Excuse me. Here's their FAQ. Yeah, this isn't the fun or happy announcement. Jump light. The Jump Light Odyssey team is working hard on one more patch for all of you before we have to stop development. Our goal with patch 0.3.1 is to make Odyssey feel as complete as we possibly can in the incredibly short time we had left in the project, including bringing in a couple of things we were holding back for 1.0. For us, Odyssey has always been a story about hope, resilience, teamwork, and preserving against all odds. So the first thing we want to say is that we are so, so immeasurably sorry that we haven't been able to find a way forward. The game is as good as it is right now because of your unwavering support, your feedback, your bug reports, and your input. This was never the future that we envisioned. Our hearts are truly, completely broken, and that we find ourselves unable to finish what we started. Ty, Blake, and myself, the directors of LOG, cannot apologize enough to the community and our wonderful team for the fact that we're here. Regardless of current market conditions, rising costs, or whatever boogeyman we want to point to, as heads of the studio, we are ultimately accountable for the situation. It's always a possibility in game dev, but this is not a message we ever expected to write, and we take full responsibility for that. You're entitled to be frustrated, sad, devastated, everything in between. I am too. All of those things. We are all, all are at League of Geeks. I hope you can understand this was an impossible situation and a heartbreaking decision we had to have to make. Your frustrations are also totally valid. The only thing I ask is that I direct them at myself and not the team. They've been through more than enough already. We don't want this to be the end of Jump Light Odyssey. If investment in the project becomes a reality, and the conditions exist where it is financially possible for us to boot, boot this game back up, we absolutely will. The grim reality, however, is that at least for right now, it's a very scary time economically for indie developers of all size. Moving forward, we want to ensure that the game dev does something to give back, so the 12-month thing again... LG was literally founded on the belief that those who contribute to our projects should share in the spoils, so it's important that we continue to hold that value. It's at least some way we can honor our friends and colleagues who have given so much to this game, and for new players to support the folks who made it special in the first place. Thanks, folks. We'll continue to update this FAQ. We have the FAQ bit that goes in more detail, but I kind of want to see this. I didn't leave Steam. Okay, so why is this happening? To be very clear, this isn't a case of excess at the top wanting to make an extra bonus or call it to change strategic direction or any of the other things you've heard big companies say before. This one really came down to our hands being forced. This project, along with Solemn Infernum, was greenlit and co-funded by ourselves and our pals at Kowloon Knights in early 21. Since then, cost of wages, software, rent, and more have increased dramatically. The Australian dollar, we're based in Melbourne, Australia, has continuously fallen against the U.S. dollar. And we've been unable to return to a studio environment, lengthening developmental time. Really? You guys haven't gone back to office? In a budget's contingency, you allow for random external factors like this, but all of them increasing at such unprecedented levels was not something we could ever hope to plan for, and as such, it has created a funding gap. We have been unable to cover that funding gap, either with earnings from early access sales or external investment funding, thus leaving a situation where we can no longer sustain the cost of development. So what's a funding gap? It is a common occurrence in creative commercial projects where during production, you need more money to finish the game, film, whatever, than you initially budgeted, thus creating a funding gap between what you have and what is needed. When you have a funding gap, that needs to be filled with money, often referred to as finishing funds. As mentioned, this is quite normal, especially in video game development, and in previous years, securing finishing funds would not have been an issue. So, why is it an issue now? Unfortunately for us, in the last six months, almost all funding and investment has evaporated from the video game industry. That is, the kind of things that we've been noticing, guys. And it's not just because video games aren't good investments, they are, but... The um, cost of getting funds and taking loans and stuff has gone up dramatically. So capital, also known as money, is more expensive and rare than it has been in over a decade. See the over 7,000 layoffs in the industry this year. 
and the only projects being backed right now are sure-fired guaranteed hits. With the positive trajectory of not only copy so, but the review score, which we had shifted from mixed to very positive in three months, we believe that Jump Light Odyssey was headed to a successful launch. But with the global economy tightening its belt, securing investment in 23 has proven challenging, to say the least. If you're interested in the broader Impact Studios, they sat down with Game Biz Industry last month to talk more, which you can read here, but we were sent on Jump Light. Could you just cut things you planned? Correct, and we did. We cut a lot from our initial vision of the game. Even after the early access launch, ultimately though, the game still needed another six months in development, as what remains on our roadmap is critical to its viability as a successful final project. Cutting another feature here or there, dropping platforms, wasn't ever going to net us the savings we needed to save the game, and only served to jeopardize the final product of its success. So why not launch before... Why not now and not before launch later at another time? Honestly, because we've had a major investment deal fall through last month. Two, in fact, in the span of three weeks, and admittedly, it blindsided them. With our deadline for funding fast approaching, this forced us into a position where there was a very real chance of us having to close our doors completely. Sales revenue from the game and early access did not give us enough time to keep looking for other ways to bridge that gap. And so, we were out of time. We were forced to choose between pausing development or shutting down entirely. So it's not your fault? We take full responsibility as the directors of the studio. We could have paid more attention to the market. We could have acted faster and more decisively. We could have made a million different choices as decision makers to avoid the early access launch issues that we had. The list goes on. Remember, they were only at mixed at the beginning. So the game needed a lot of work in, as it launched in early access. When you run a company, you're ultimately responsible for the fate of that company, its products, and most importantly, its employees. Regardless of external factors, to be in this position, we have failed you, our customers, and our team. For this, we are sincerely and deeply sorry. We want to be clear that our team are not at fault for this outcome. They did their absolute best and deserve the world, especially your support. But the games on Steam and Early Access, isn't that covering cost? Nope. It would be naive and even dishonest for us to avoid the fact that we had a rough Early Access launch, to say the least. One that we take full responsibility for, and while we feel with those lessons learned the game is back on track, the sales from Early Access are still nowhere near enough to sustain a team anywhere near the size required to support a game of Jump Light Odyssey's scope and ambition. So why this game, but not the Solium Infernum? It's very important to us that you all understand this wasn't a decision of which game we opted to save or believed in more. There were only two possible scenarios with the money we had left in the bank account. Pause development on Odyssey so we can release Infernum as planned, or cancel both games immediately and shut down for good. Odyssey was set to launch in six months, and Infernum is two. The amount of money required to complete Odyssey is two to three times as much as Infernum, not to mention the complexity of console development compared to a game that is PC only. There was no scenario in which we could get Odyssey to 1.0 without substantial financial investment. That never materialized. So they're here they're just talking more about it being winding down. They're putting in some stuff. Can I suggest some things to go on? As you all know, our list is the same as yours based on the work we're doing. Chance I'll be brought in the past is on the list. Do keep in mind that time is on our side. How can I help? Can we make a crowdfunding campaign? I have a rich uncle. Unfortunately, the funding gap isn't a problem a Kickstarter or grassroots campaign can solve. We're continuing our conversations with investors in the hopes that may be a fruit somewhere down the line. The best thing you can do right now is support the people who have worked so hard to make this, these games. If you love what they've made or believed in our vision here at any point, take the opportunity to let them know. If you're reading this as someone who is in a position to hire, get in touch with us and they'll connect you. The remaining crew are working tirelessly on Infernum, still coming out February 14th. <laughs> Real hell on Valentine's Day, that's cute. Lastly, tell your gaming powers to not only buy indie games, but to support the people behind the products you love. Can you open up the source code? That's not something they're looking at, as we would love to retain the ability to kick off development again should opportunity arise, and if we've opened the project up, it places us in an unnecessarily complex position from a legal licensing perspective. Not to mention, the project being open source can lessen chances of, inve in, of external investment. Uh, our metal will support, can support will continue. We have enough funding development on Infernum to see us through launch and a couple of updates, hopefully a DLC too, but right now we don't want to make any promises. It's going to depend on how the game sells. What does this mean for League of Geeks? They're not going anywhere. What will happen to the game on Steam? They're going to keep it again up on Steam. For If you feel like a refund, utilize Steam's refund policy. The smartphone Steam set it up 
final situation. It's moving forward, we want to ensure that Odyssey does something to give back. So, the, yeah, that's the... Uh, it's not true. Steam refused if you played for more than two hours. Sad, a game like never be finished. I cannot be... Refi true, as much as I do, look... 30 euros, not nothing, but at that point, would I have that money for something else? As it was a dead game in my library. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here, unfortunately. And this is, the entire FAQ is a diary, read, as it says. I wanted to go through it. So, let's talk a little more about this, guys. Because the cow's opinion is that this sucks. This is a game I actually wanted to play but I've played a lot of early access games. I was waiting for the, especially with the mix at the beginning. I was waiting for it to get more positive and for time slots to open up on the Cow's channel before I joined in on the early access. And they've admitted that look, we were not, we had a terrible early access launch. It's nobody's fault but ours. Uh, let's talk about the important thing because you're like, well, a bunch of fun. We can't just do a Kickstarter and save it. So, they said specifically, cannot be saved by a Kickstarter campaign from sympathetic fans or someone's rich uncle. That means that the amount of money they need to finish the game is so high that they don't think... They, it's got to be probably seven figures. I would guess it's at least a million dollars in Australian money. Because like they said, the Australian dollar is weakening against the US dollar. And that means that you need more Australian dollars to equal U.S. dollars. The dollar is very strong right now. Uh, I try not to talk economics a lot, though I do love it. And just because of the state of the world right now, you have multiple wars going on. You have people, uh, nations are pulling out of China because they're finally tired of China. And... You know, American manufacturing is coming back. A lot of stuff was strengthening the dollar. Now, that makes it more expensive for America to import stuff, but it also means that it takes more Australian dollars to get a U.S. dollar because it's getting weaker. And that means that the same amount of money that uh, these developers could use to, like, get stuff that they might need, like software from probably American companies, it now takes a lot more resources. I was kind of surprised that they talked about how they didn't have the ability to go back to office yet because it's 2023. I don't know if that was because the workers just wanted to be remote or if they were just like, it's too expensive to get office space again. They all are pretty uh, smaller developer. It's not like they own a building or anything. They're not EA. But yeah, they've lost half their staff. One of the two games they were going to release for 2024 is paused indefinitely. That means that they also have less of an opportunity for DLC or other transactions on the game. So Infernum's going to be the only game I think that they're releasing. They're still supporting Armello. Armello is pretty fun. Don't get me wrong, but, you know, you've got to be able to make more stuff. So, yeah, this is, sucks. This really, really sucks. I'm going to just check some comments. Sad news, but understandable. One of the favorite releases. Oh, no, this is unfortunate. It's so sad. That's a shame. Thanks to the team. Sorry to hear this. Such a shame. At least everyone's being nice. Tumblr feel. What does that even mean? I, th I don't know if that last guy was nice, but... So yeah, the cow's opinion is that, like they said in the articles, the FAQs and stuff, over 7,000 people have been affected by layoffs in the game industry here in 2023. And even though it's already December, and there's only a couple weeks left, I would expect that number to go up. We're probably going to hit at least 8,000. As the world shifted back to being able to go other places and do stuff, people all, you know, they're not held as hostage. The same thing is happening to streaming. Streaming services thought that they would keep adding massive numbers of people year over year, but they eventually hit the point where people were willing to pay the price, as well as, Oh, I don't need all these streamers now because I can go outside and do stuff again and see people. So this sucks. I I can't tell you 
you should go buy Jump Light Odyssey and give it a try and support it. Because, like, first of all, it's not being finished. And second of all, you know, I it's it's an early access game. I've been burned on many uh, on several early access games. There's one that is never going to be finished. That I won't. I'm not going to mention it here and badmouth them. But it's. I'm sure the project is dead, even though they haven't said anything. It's not going to be finished. I'm just out that money, and that sucks because that is twenty or thirty bucks or your regional equivalent is a lot for some people. That might be the only free cash they have for gaming that month and if you spend it on a game and the game does not come out you don't get a game and that is sucky and it's terrible and no i just and there's not really a good happy suggestion or answer that i have i the heads of the studio are like dude we we need to do better i don't feel like this is greedy heads of a studio screwed up i think that like they said there's stuff that they could have done but they just didn't expect the weakening currency, the the trade, the massive increase in all their costs. They did not expect all of that to happen at once. And that sucks. And it's terrible for them. Uh, guys, let me know in the comments below. Were you planning on playing Jump Light Odyssey? Or were you... Is there another game that maybe you'll be like, that's been massively delayed or canceled. And that sucks because I really want to play it. Let me know down below and play more games because games are awesome and you deserve awesome. This sucks and I hope the next year is better for the industry and I hope that these guys get to finish development. I'll see you next time.